Today on Gamers Couch, Millennium Blades. Hello, happy Sunday, welcome to the couch. On this fine last day of April, we are going to talk about... Well, it's getting colder because it's we're moving yeah. away from the winter, but he, the winter doesn't want really to let us go, so it's almost... It has us in a tight grip. <sighs> it's rather chilly, 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 chilly in uh, Germany. But I was saying, on this fine last day of April, we are going to take you on a very special tournament that might have to do something with uh, trading card games and a meta joke thing going on. We're talking Millennium Plates, folks. <laughs> my name is Sarah. I'm the artist behind Pinselgeschichten and this is Daniel, my sweet husband. I'm not gonna poke out my fingers too much because I'm quite uh, warming them. I've got cold hands. But uh, I hope it's gonna be warmer while I beat you in a couple of uh, turns of Millennium Blades while we talk about rules and gameplay. And then we are going to talk about what we liked or not liked about this game and have a tiny little thumb rating and finish off with funny stories and experiences. And I just realized I have to tease Gamers uh, Draw for Initiative and I don't remember the game. So I'm going to, on a sub-level, try to remember what game i have to tease at the end totally blanked i set up everything so nice and i totally blanked on looking up have, in the calendar you had enough time to prepare yeah i it would have been nice if i would have remembered that's the the important thing here but maybe i can recreate the chain of paintings in I my see, mind while you are going to talk rules and gameplay we are going to duel over this. <laughs> so, welcome to Millennium Blades. Uh, did you ever had a certain craving for the excitement and stress of being at a trading card game tournament and hopefully also winning it and not just once, but maybe three of them while scrambling to build your deck to a accommodate what your enemies are trying to do, maybe disrupt their plans or formulate your own new plan to explore deck combos, maybe pull off the ultimate combo or just be the kind of aggressive player that goes into screwing up others' plans. Whatever you like to do in trading card games, Millennium Blades pretty much has it all covered. Um, in this, um, th this game is a little bit difficult to explain. So um, actually, let me take you with us on our road as I try to explain it to people mm -hmm. from our group, um, where we say, well, there's mainly two big components to this game. One is you have a deck of cards, your deck that you assemble and take uh, on to compete in tournaments. And we'll start with one of those tournaments here, uh, which would be the so-called pre-release tournament, which is a good way to get to know Millennium Blades and get to know what, how the cards work and how all of that interacts before actually being tasked to uh, build your deck. So um, why not get started. Um, each of us uh, has one of the starter packs uh, or starter decks uh, available. And uh, for the uh, pre-release tournament, we will only be uh, playing with these. Um, the game always goes over three tournaments, meaning if you're doing this pre-release thing, you're skipping out on the last real tournament. So instead of um, the, the usual game structure where we have a deck building phase first, we'll get to that then a tournament, and then uh, going on uh, until three tournaments have been completed. We are doing this a little bit upside down by starting with the pre-release and then going into the, the deck building part. So each of our uh, starter decks has a, a couple of cards. They are not certainly uh, not all the same. Um, you have essentially um, 
two, three different types of cards. One is a deck box that goes into the slot here for deck box, and each player has one of these tableaus, um, which will prove quite helpful during the course of the game. Um, we start with one accessory, and uh, you might already see that, like, uh, the deck box is called Mono Fire Powerhouse, and uh, the accessory are deck protectors, and they have uh, certain special abilities. Uh, you can bring up to eight cards, typically one deck box and two accessories that go on to here, and that is the maximum size for your deck. Um, during the tournament, you'll only be playing typically six out of your eight cards, and that is why you have six slots here to place those cards. It is a very, very, very boiled down version, very streamlined version of a trading card game. So um, if you've played something like Hearthstone, for example, and thought that was a breathe, breathe of fresh air to you from let's say, older uh, trading card formats like Magic, where you had to worry about mana and all that. Uh, in Millennium Blades, it's even simpler than that because you will only be playing six cards, but don't think that this is really easy because it is, yes, an abstraction of how trading card games work, but it actually does so quite well. So... Um, from the cards that we have, um, I will just uh, go and um, start here uh, to, to play one. Um, let's say I want to start with the Canon Technician Merrill that says if I play this card, I gain 18 rank points, and rank points is how you will win the tournament. So uh, the player with the most rank points at the end of the tournament makes first place, and then second place, and so on, and for each place you get actual victory points, and the player who has the most victory points at the end of the game then wins the entire game. So I'm playing Canon Technician Merrill first, uh, and these cards usually reference either something from a trading card game or a popular anime or another game, or there's a lot of puns and pop culture references in here. Um, Basically, uh, something else you uh, need to know to read this card is uh, the card has a, a, a value, which is it's also the cost, but uh, for play purposes, it's almost the power of the card. The higher the number, the more powerful the card. Below that, you have an element and a type and our uh, little uh, deck board here, uh, our tableau, comes uh, with an explanation of the different elements and types, which for themselves don't do much, but will certainly be referenced by cards. So you, if you're familiar with trading card games, you have seen this. It's almost like a keyword that might be referenced by some something else. So uh, my cannon technician is of the fire element and a citizen type, and uh, there's also the rarity here. That is from which deck this came, since these are all starter decks. Uh, they are from the core package, but some cards might also reference the deck. So I'm playing Ken Technician Merrill, and I'm getting gaining 18 points. Um, we have a, a little uh, calculation device up here where we can uh, keep track of our scores, which is a little bit awkward first time maybe around, but, um, well... And then it's uh, the next player's turn, in this case, Sarah. I'm playing the King of the Faraway Mountain, which has a score. Uh, it says I get 25 points if there's no card higher than this card on my tableau. So if I play only cards that are less or at most five stars, uh, I'm going to score 25 points in the end. That's not too bad. I know. Next, I'm playing Lars Pikeman, um, which I, uh, you always have to place it into the next slot here. So I couldn't go and place him uh, later down uh, this thing. So this is very much about thinking in which order you might want to play cards, specifically if they play off each other. So one thing I didn't tell you about the Canon Technician is that there's another keyword on there. So it says play, gain 18 points, and the other is score. 
score happens at the end of the tournament, where we'll just go through all our cards that score something. something. So Cannon Technician Merrill uh, says play, gain 18 points, score, lose 20 points. So I want to get rid of this um, uh, effect in some way, and there is a way to do that. Um, so my Lars Pikeman says score, gain nine points for each face down card adjacent to this one. There is a mechanism available in this game that is called flipping, which uh, means effectively you will turn over the card to its back side and it will still count as a card, but it is a card with in, without any star value, without a type, without an element. It's pretty much like a blank card, uh, but it's still a card. So it's Samstone. Um, I'm going to play Gasticus, uh, the Wind Spirit. It has a play um, thing going on. It says gain ra uh, rating points equal to twice the star value of the card to the immediate left of this one. So that would be 10 points for me. Okay. Sarah, 10 points. Uh, sure. Sarah, 10 points. Sure, I think. Sure. <laughs> um, Don't make the duck face while you're thinking. <laughs> it's kind of attractive, but then next, not. <laughs> next, I'm going to play Salamander Volcanic Lizard. It says, play, gain three rank points for each water and fire card in your tableau. Now, um, this means... Uh, tableau always refers to those cards up here, and that's why it says Tableau, so my deck and my deck protector don't count for this. And this is a card that reference or is the first to reference our uh, elements here. So for each Water and Fire card, I have three cards here, getting three rank points for each, so that leaves me with nine ranking points, which bumps me up to 26. The But we have a new keyword on here. This says Action Clash with an Opponent. The winner gains 10. So uh, this, were uh, the way Clash works, and I'm going to... Am I going to use that? Uh, no, nah, I'm fine. Um, uh, you can Clash with another player. Essentially what happens is uh, you compare your topmost card, so the one to the right, uh, that star value, and you'll also draw a card from the store market deck, which you won't see because I haven't set it up yet just to give us a little bit more space. But imagine a big pile of cards being next to me. Uh, and if you clash with someone, you just draw a card and compare the number there with the number that the other player has plus a random card uh, that the other player drew. And what happens then is entirely up to that card. In this case, the, um, the winner gains uh, 10 rank points. Um, we'll see to that. But now it's Cyrus turn. Yeah. Um... This is so inconvenient, but well, I'm playing Birdkeeper Arika. It says play, gain five points for every different type among cards in your tableau, max 20. I got two different types. So I got the citizen and the myth, which means 10 points for me. Okay. Sarah, deep one. I'm going to play Malcolm. Footman, and you might see that there's a, a theme now to my cards uh, or to my deck. Uh, it's kind of like uh, almost knights or people fighting. Um, so this says, if I play the card, I gain nine points, um, or nine rank points. So I'm going up another nine points. And uh, this also has an action. And now we are getting to action. So what I didn't explain to you yet so far is on your turn, you have to play a card. Uh, but you can either before or after playing a card use one action. Uh, in fact, it doesn't have to be the action of the card that is on top here, but one of the actions in your tableau. So, um, and that includes uh, accessories and decks. Some of them might have an action. Um, so in my case, I want now to use uh, the action that is on Malcolm, which means uh, or says flip an adjacent card and gain seven points. So what happens then? I flip an adjacent card. Then I'm getting seven points. I'm on six. I'm getting 
3 and another 10. Uh, and then what happens is if you use the action of a card, you flip the card itself. So uh, I cannot use this, or you cannot typically use an action more than once. Uh, so my goal is now to also get this card flipped so that I don't get this nasty lose 20 rank point score. And I also want to get the condition set up for this card that says gain 9 for each face down card adjacent to this one. So. Sarah, um, back again. Playing Rocketman Kev that says I can swap two cards and I get points for their star value combined. Of course, I'm going to take the two and the five because, well, that's seven and I cannot accomplish any other other higher um, uh, thingamajig. What's it called? Ranking point score. Okay. So, go on. So I'm going next to play Shaliza, Heroine of the Axe, which has a uh, helpful play effect for me. If I play it, uh, I can flip another card in my tableau. And if I do so, I gain 24 points. So obviously, and now I'm trying, I'll flip my cannon technician. So I don't lose any points for that one. Since this is a play effect, this doesn't flip this card. It's not an action. but I, And I still gain... 24 points, so let's add 4 here and 20 there. Looking pretty good so far. And it's Sarah's turn. I'm playing Yellow Egg Birth of Wind. It is an ongoing card that uh, copies a card to the immediate left if it has 6 or less stars, which is the case. So I can again swap and get the points. And this time I'm swapping 4 and 5, which is 9. And then um, I get to a 6 and I get to a 30. So I'm mean, getting 36 points. So by now you might have asked the question, wait, how do you flip cards back? And the answer is typically you don't. Um, that is one of the bigger strategic aspects of playing this game, that you want to have a really good idea in which order to execute your combo and make sure not to screw yourself. Uh, as a final card, I will now play, and I, you see there's one card left over because I'm not playing all the cards, I'm just playing six. Um, I'm playing Bernie Pyromancer. If I play this card, I may flip uh, another card in my tableau and I gain uh, ranking points equal to twice its star value. So uh, obviously I'm trying to gain the maximum out of that, so I'm flipping this five star, getting twice the amount, meaning 10 points. Um, and it says if it was a water card, which it was not, it was a fire card, uh, I would have gained five more points. Uh, but uh, that's that. And that concludes my turn so far. And I'm putting down Treneth, novice archer. He has a score um, thing going on, giving me 18 points if there is no adjacent card with a higher star value, which I'm going to... Score in a minute. And that concludes our pre-release tournament. We now got an idea how our deck works and how everything interacts. And it might seem strange that I'm ahead now. Uh, uh, some, but some you points. Ha I haven't scored everything yet. Exactly. We haven't uh, scored uh, everything yet. So now we go through all the cards that say something like about the score. So for me, it says gain nine for each face down card adjacent to this one, meaning I get an, another 18 points, which... Uh, Puts me 18, and then I still have my deck box that says gain 8 for each fire card in my tableau. So remember, those flipped face down cards have no type, so they don't count as fire cards, leaving me only with two cards that are eligible for this, and that gives me another 16 points, uh, which goes to 100, and then. 10, which leaves me with a total of 111 oh, rank points. And now it's Sarah's turn. I'm can getting... She, can she get, get me? I get 25 plus 18 plus 30. That would be 73. I think so. <laughs> that would, would, which would put me to 100 and... Three here. That's a hundred and nine. 
you're really, really close up to, to me. I know. And that's that was the first tournament already. I, this is probably a bad example to give you a good idea how all the different starter decks work, but you already see that there's a, a, a distinct flavor to, to each deck, uh, even with the two we've been playing. Um, clearly, mine has to do with flipping my cards. There are other... Um, other decks that uh, kind of focus around more that clashing mechanic where you have to compare cards with another player. Uh, other decks might more focus on disrupting other players. So th yes, there are cards that uh, might force your opponent to flip a card, even if they really don't want to. I mean, uh, imagine uh, if I would have flipped some of Sarah's cards, let's say score 25 for whatever uh, is going on there, that hurts quite a bit. And uh, some of these cards uh, might also deal with multiple players at the same time. But that is why everybody brings a card condom to the tournament, well, that's which the deck at least yes. one... So Once the, you're protected. So, so a keyword we hadn't, haven't had yet is the reaction thing. So the deck protectors we got has a reaction ability saying prevent a card in your tableau from being flipped by an opponent's effect. Which is, as you might have guessed from the word reaction, something you can trigger. Someone else is doing something nasty. Uh, for that, similar with the regular action, you flip this over. So this is used up and then uh, that has been done. Um, so you can only use these ones uh, either. After you've done that, you gather up your cards. Um, Sarah would have taken note of our score. On this very handy score pad. On the, uh, regarding the rank points. And we put our deck back. And the deck back. Uh, then uh, you go into the deck building phase uh, for which you flip over your tableau because there's more stuff to do. And now we have to pull back because there will be two more uh, of pieces coming into, which theoretically you would have seen on the table, but for, well, space purposes and to give you a better look at what's going on, uh, we decided to do a cut after this and set the other part up. And then we'll talk about our new found uh, uh, area here and the two other areas we're going to set up. Be back in a hot second now. And we're back and rich. Not so if $30 are rich to you, not, then... Not by name, but this looks like a lot more than $30. So this game has the interesting little quirk of no, yes, you have paper money, but no, uh, one dollar is a bundle of dollars because you will now start spending some real cash on things printed cardboard again no, it's like it's like buying board games huh it's pretty much like buying board <laughs> games. Um, so we uh we flipped over our tableaus and uh have our deck uh safely placed in in oh. the deck area the two things that are now on the table you haven't seen um before is uh, the, the store and the uh, aftermarket area um, where this deck that I was talking about that is used for drawing cards at random for clashes is uh, residing on and uh, how where you would reveal cards. If you're clashing, the revealed cards will usually go into this aftermarket area where they can be purchased, uh, which is nice. Uh, but if no clash has been played, this is, it can entirely be empty. So uh, the thing that happens first is that each player gets six cards. Um, so uh, six cards for you, three, six cards for me, and those go into the binder face down. We are not allowed to look at them quite yet. Um, you will get another six cards in a couple of minutes, uh, to be honest, in uh, probably exactly seven. Um, and you also reveal the first metagame card. Uh, metagame cards are uh, fairly simple. They're, they're like an additional uh, scorecard um, that refer to what happens in the game. So this is like well, the meta that happens to, to favor certain elements, certain types. So in for an upcoming tournament, air will give you another 15 rank points if you have at least one card on your tableau that has the air symbol on it. Um, 
It's a good thing that I play the fart deck, hmm. which is air, I guess. So let's talk about this phase in general. This phase is called the deck building phase because you will now start to, uh, well, expand or change cards in your deck to either make it give you more points, be maybe a little bit better at deflecting enemy attacks, uh, and so on. Uh, the deck building phase is timed or at least I would heavily recommend to play it in a timed fashion because uh, that helps speeding the game up a considerable part. Um, the way this works is you know, everybody gets six cards from the deck that's kind of free and that's the hey you are spending money on cards anyway um, so uh, you you get these and uh, that's good you're good to go. Uh, then you get some timekeeping device and set it to seven minutes and that will be the first phase and during that first phase you can do a couple of actions. Um, as soon as someone says go you will bring some use to this and uh, maybe you can you want to buy more cards now this looks terribly boring and uniform because i am a little bit lazy so all the cards that are here in the stock are just the core cards and those are the ones that will be part of every game because this is the basic card stock that you have here uh, but there's, uh, for example, these premium cards or expansion cards and uh, master cards that are actually over there. Master cards. Um, where you will select a good couple of these. Uh, so uh, when, when we say expansion cards, you have, for example, the lightning bug section which yes is uh, an obvious firefly reference so uh, this is one set of cards uh, in this case one set of expansion cards from this lightning bug series that has uh, a couple of character cards in here and uh, stuff that uh, is part of this um, which would be sh uh, shuffled into this huge store deck because you will have uh, five of these four of the promotional packs and three of the master packs so it's a little bit more than just those core cards but to get the point across those core cards are perfectly fine to explain to you what happens the only thing you don't see on here uh, is uh, for example these icons and the different prizes so um, this is essentially the backside of this card it represents a booster you can you can buy um, and if you buy a card uh, this tells you what types are in this uh, set and what elements are in this set. So you have an idea if this might match what you're using in your deck or what you're going for. Otherwise, it might be something you don't care at all and just want to uh, grab up all these here and work with them. The price you have to pay is up here. So if this says four, you have to pay four of your dollars, which is terrible to grasp. Uh, which is four of these stacks which go back to the bank and then you uh, can uh, uh, grab the card and put it in your uh, in your binder or in your hand whatever you want to do um, and re immediately replace it from the store deck so you can buy from these nine plus the top one that is on on the store deck uh, leaving you ten cards uh, to to buy there um, then something else you can do uh, from time to time you realize that you have well, I mean, you're getting six cards now. You'll be getting six cards really soon. You have bought a couple of cards. Maybe you've done some tournaments. Uh, you will end up with a lot of cards on your hand. What will you do with those? Well, uh, the uh, the obvious way is to sell them. So you have a couple of sell markers. What you can do is uh, you grab your card, and if you want to get rid of it, maybe not my, maybe not the card condom, uh, maybe. Maybe my cannon technician, although she did a really good job to me. So what I can do is I put it into the aftermarket area and then put my cell marker on this. Uh, and immediately I'm getting $4 uh, dollars from the bank um, and that's it for me. Now for other players, they can buy this card if they want to for the same price. So the bank is really just doing that, is acting as a bank. So they're paying $4 to the bank. Um, then grabbing the card and that's where I get my cell marker back. So um, 
With a limited of ma amount of sell markers, I have to decide how many cards I want to sell there or put up for sale. Um, especially if they're probably cards that won't go away or aren't in high demand, on demand by someone else. So um, you kind of have to make the hard call there. Um, but that's not the only use for a cell marker and not the only way to get rid of cards. Uh, we have also something called card fusion, um, where you're not buying or selling something, but you are trashing a certain amount of cards to get one of these promo cards that are here. So if you uh, trash and essentially uh, um, put it into the discard pile five cards, you get a bronze promotional card, for seven cards you get a silver card, and for nine you get a gold card. And again, you have to put your cell mark on here because you can only get one of the promos per deck building phase uh, once. So uh, you could spend three cell markers on these and get one of each, but be aware these will never go back to you in this deck building round. So you are severely limited with selling cards there. So this is, has to be seen as an alternative to selling cards on the aftermarket. Maybe you're lucky enough to be able to place some high value cards into the aftermarket so that someone buys that and you get the marker back and then can go into the card fusion. And these cards are similar to what other cards you've seen, but you already see that some of them are really powerful. So for example, Imperial Assassin Mara is a 10 star value card although she has no effect, but those 10 star this 10 star value can be incredibly useful. For example, if you're using a deck that uses clashing, some decks allow you to use or convert the star value into ranking points. So it is worth uh, looking at what is available here with those cards. So uh, what we had was you can uh, buy cards here, you can sell cards here, you can obviously also buy cards from here uh, if someone puts them up. Um, you can uh, turn your cards uh, using fusion ability to uh, those promo cards. And that is kind of what you do mainly with your actions. There's something else you can do, uh, and that is more important for the end of the deck building phase. So let's talk about the structure of the deck building phase first. Um, so that's what you do within those seven minutes, and uh, you will probably uh, look very much like Like this, trying to get together a deck that you think is able to compete with everybody else in the next tournament. Um, you do so for seven minutes, and then if the time goes off, everybody in a, in a mannered fashion puts back their current deck or their binder. Then you get another six cards from this store deck. Pretty great, huh? Um, and... Uh, then you uh, set another timer for seven minutes, repeat that entire thing, uh, and then you get another phase of six minutes where you are not allowed to sell any more cards. Um, think of it as those six minutes are there to give you a good shot at finally fussing out how your deck should look like and uh, thinking about in what order you want to play cards and what makes sense and what not. Remember that you only may bring eight cards to the tournament or at least eight play cards and uh, the, the deck and two accessories. So you might have to make a hard decision in the nick of time. That's one of the points of this game. You have to have that time pressure a little bit because you're not building the perfect deck or the 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 biggest, better, best combo in, that you have available. Yes, this is a little bit of a puzzle game when it comes to that, but um, it's also about the stress that you have during that entire thing. Uh, and after that, the deck building phase ends, and there's only one thing really left to do, apart from making sure that your deck is here. Uh, something else you can do during um, and I should actually take these cards because these are a little bit easier to explain to that. Uh, another area you have on your board is the collection area. Because, to be honest with you, the tournaments are only half 
of what you do to actually win in the end. Uh, uh, collecting cards and scoring points for that is almost equally as important um, when, you, when it comes to victory points. So the collection area works as such. Uh, you collect cards either with the same type or with the same element. Uh, and uh, I'm taking these cards because they're all fire cards, which makes this incredibly easy to explain. <laughs> And uh, the other uh, thing is that each card must have a different star rating. So I may only have one, one star, one three star, one five star, and I cannot put another three star on here because that wouldn't count. So let's say I put another four star here, which gives me a total of four cards uh, in my collection. And uh, once we get to the end of the deck building phase, these cards go away and I score points for the amount of cards that were here. So in this case I get nine, but not ranking, but victory points um, that go for the end of the game. To give you uh, an idea how that ranks with uh, the tournament, well the tournament points progress uh, in uh, that pre-release game we just did. The winner would have gotten seven victory points for that, the second place gets five. Um, but those progress as you go forward and uh, the last tournament is obviously always uh, worth more points uh, than the first, uh, not so much for the collection. But this is an important part, especially if you're playing, uh, as I just showed you, with the, the pre-release uh, demo thing. Um, and that is pretty much the deck building phase. So uh, this is an a weird game in that you have these two very distinct feeling uh, uh, parts that uh, together form what I think is a pretty good representation of a trading card game or a collectible card game in uh, that you have the uh, this collecting stuff, buying cards, selling them, uh, trading them. Oh, that's actually something I haven't explained yet. Uh, there's another thing you can do. You can trade a card with another player. The only restriction there being that it has to have the same star value on here. And uh, you, if someone still doesn't want to trade with you, you want to sweeten the deal. You have these friendship cards that you can give out to them and they will be worth additional victory points at the end of the game which is uh, also pretty cool, but uh, you get the idea how this works. So there's this aspect of uh, being uh, stressed out about what's going on. Um, in, in the first phase, you reveal the element type. Then after the uh, first break, you, uh, you reveal the, uh, the type type card, a uh, metagame card. So suddenly you might think, oh my god, I need to rearrange my deck. Now I need constructs in there because I want to have that plus 15 bonus as well. Um, or you're saying straight away, I'm my deck is good as it is. I don't need those points or I'm aiming for something entirely different. Maybe I don't care about my deck as much at all. I'm more trying to get that one missing card that uh, gives me another one for my collection here, um, which uh, is a totally valid aspect. Uh, then you might go in into a direction saying, I want to sell cards to get more cash to buy cards from, from here. Uh, or I want to go for the... Um, for these promo cards in hopes that, uh, that I'm picking up one that is really good. But knowing that uh, even if I pick up one of those gold promo cards and that card is probably good, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good in my deck. So I might have to get rid of my deck and now build a new one around this card that has some synergy with the effects uh, that are going on here. And then you have this entirely different second part uh, where you go to a tournament and play six cards and uh, then it becomes a puzzle again, but a puzzle of in what order can you play the cards? What is everybody else playing? Well, as, as peaceful and nice as this looked in our uh, pre-release tournament where we were both doing our thing, uh, <laughs> our thing. We're German and, as enough today. And, um, 
and uh, putting putting down the cards and I had oh, all the confidence of okay this is how I can maximize my points with, with what I have in hand that gets incredibly frustrating if you're playing against someone who's then coming up and saying yeah I've played this card I want to play clash with you by the way if you lose the clash or it's it's a Sunday then you have to flip that card and I choose the card that gives you the most points and then you say I hate you and uh, want to strangle someone with or slap them with your cash and later uh... <laughs> oh <laughs> promise or <laughs> and uh, then you repeat that entire thing so uh, in a in a proper game if you already everybody at the table knows the rules you would start with the deck building phase first and then play the first tournament and then repeat that two more times and score after the third tournament or if you're playing with players who are new it is a, a really good recommendation to start with a pre-release tournament just to get an idea and explanation how the, the cards themselves work so that they have a fair chance of building a deck that is actually functional um and uh yeah that's pretty much it at the end you'll find out on the score sheet who has won and um that is typically doesn't necessarily feel super predictable all the time i think no, no. um i think if i but well, well that's part of the experience already would i have not announced that because whomever scored highest in the round before is the next starting player um i think nobody at the table would have known for sure who ranked where yeah and uh there's so much content in this game that i won't go through all of these um but just be aware so this is the premium deck uh which is pretty big. The expansion deck is almost the same in size. The master pack is always you also can, almost the same in size. Um, you can show the, the insert and that saying that everything is filled with cards. Yeah, I, I think. It's maybe the, it's just a, the amount is... It is a, a really good sized box and uh, the... Uh, the variety in in uh, those additional card packs you find here. So you have something like this mouse card, which is an obvious reference to mouse card. Uh, or uh, here we have Clockwork Empire, which uh, I don't actually. It's some Gundam mecha thing that this is referring to. Uh, we have a set that is called The Legend of Tanana, which is uh, clearly a Zelda reference. We have the cards from the crypt, uh, which I don't even have to explain. Uh, so th all of these different... Explain to me. It's Tales from the Crypt. It's a TV show. Okay. Yeah. No. And since you are always choosing 5, 4, 3 of these decks, there is a really, really big variety of how replayability to, to this game. Um, where I think it's safe to say that each of those decks also tends to feel like it's a unique play style. Um, that uh, obviously there's some repeat in in there, but uh, I have to say, um, and that is almost diverging into the likes and dislikes part. Uh, this captures uh, the feel of trading card games in an um, emotional stress way as well as a mechanical way. Of, and the amount of cards of abstracting <laughs> the. The types of plays where whether you're playing something like a milling deck or uh, something that is able to uh, bring you more cards, um, almost like like a graveyard deck, and uh, some others are more competitive in terms of disrupting what other players are doing. And it's it's a very broad uh, uh, way, and there's always something new to discover. And sometimes you end up with a card looking like it's a damn, I really like what's on this card and what this can do, but it just doesn't fit what I have here. Uh, whatever, I'm going to build an entirely new thing with this card, and um, I want to see if I can I can make this work. And even that in itself is fun enough. Um, but uh, there's... Uh, it looks simplistic, maybe. I Actually, no, it doesn't really look, but it. I let me assure you, there's a really, really good variety on on playstyle and uh, content here. Uh, not even to speak about uh, the the artwork, 
that um, so we have this uh, James Bomb 006 plus one um, where you have uh, James Bomb or uh, oder or, oder, or? oder Dr. Golducky which uh, shuffle okay. not stir so it is a fun game that knows exactly what it is and what they what they did there um, to uh, um, to capture the the theme of the puns they are making of uh, the artwork is looking great it has uh, the style of or it feels like those games like uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Magic uh, Pokemon all thrown together and shuffled up into one big simulation and I think that is a pretty good yeah, uh, while I will tell them because I, I entered when you said on the verge I entered the screen because yeah. it was so seamless I don't want to disrupt that but while I'll tell the folks uh, what I like about this game can you or do you know by heart how many players play time and age required? I do. That's why I placed the box there so that I can actually look it up. So it is two to five players and uh, is uh, set for about uh, two hours playtime, which uh, is Seems reasonably is, correct. Uh, well, surprisingly, uh, yeah, predictably correct because you have, at least for the deck building time, a timer running. Um, and that is one reason why you should have uh, the, the timer running. You can play this um, in, uh, uh, I think there's a, a turn based mode in, in there. Was it? or rules for how you can skip that without the timer. But to be honest, um, I think it's one of the main characteristics of this game that there's a little bit of pressure on you to make uh, the correct choice in uh, the nick of the time and have that in. So I would recommend to give the time mode a, a try first before maybe uh, exploring the other mode if you want to, to do that. Um, and uh, it has no H printed on there. But you it's, have to be able to read. But it says the intensity is high. Um, I'd say 12, 14, something like that would be appropriate, any, I think. Any, any age where you think you feel comfortable playing magic with someone is good for, would fit for this game. Um, I mean, obviously, the, all the puns would probably be over someone's head who's not old enough to understand them, but you don't have to at all. This is a very, very mechanically solid game um, that with pretty pictures that happens to have pretty pictures. And if you above that also are able to understand what they reference, you are getting the most out of that. But that is certainly not a requirement to have a lot of fun playing this. So now can I say? <laughs> All right, let's do some talking on this side of the table here. So uh, I have never played trading card games. Can I please finish my sentence? We've played together. In any tournament style, I have never bought boosters or bought trading card games and tried to build the perfect deck. Like I said, let me finish my sentence. I do have the... Longer I, pause because then the important thing is I, I just, speech pattern. I just want anyway, to simulate controversy as part of this. We don't like that at this channel. <laughs> we don't like, okay. That's no controversy that's, at the channel. This is not one of those real, <laughs> real TV, oh, my marriage is so awful kind of podcasts. No, it's about gaming. We're divorced when we play. We can go at each other, and otherwise we're nice. Okay, so <laughs> may I now say something about no. the game? Or? <laughs> so, it's not, well, we actually record this uh, this time around Friday night or Friday evening because, well, we got plans for tomorrow, but he's way too awake. This is... Now you know why I like to record this Saturdays. Anyway, so I, I never did the trading card kind of thing. I played a couple of rounds of Magic once I met him. And, uh, well, we it's, it's a nice game to take uh, to vacation, maybe, with a bigger group of nerds. So that's pretty much the extent of what I did with trading card games. Um, 
So I don't get many of the puns that are maybe in regards to anime, to trading card games, or to certain TV shows uh, that were in, let's say, the Western world on Saturday morning on, uh, well, not public uh, TV station, but a private one. Things that have cartoons, reference and stuff like that, I don't get them. But that doesn't mean I don't enjoy this game. It, I do actually really like it for the art style and for the art in there. It gives me enough pleasure without knowing all of the puns. Uh, some of them I do get, so I giggle once in a while. Um, what I like most about this game is that there's two very, very different phases each round. So I actually like that the... Um, tournament uh, phase is feels totally different from the uh, building your deck phase that you flip your tableau that you have a store or a market there and well even the goofy kind of monopoly um, kind of uh, builds here even they make me giggle and I do like that you have a timed phase and then that is not so much with cursing at other people but having the stress of um, trying to figure out how to optimize your deck maybe how to get uh, collection um, stuff done uh, which cards to bring stuff like that so that's a different kind of stress than deciding during a tournament okay I've got uh, four other players at the table uh, I'm attacked currently. Uh, somebody wants to flip my card. Am I am I gonna play my card protector? Is it really that bad? Uh, what if anybody else then uh, attacks me and I cannot do anything? And that effect is actually worse than this one. So this is a different kind of stress, and I like that they are well. They they just enrich in the game for me um would it have been for two hours just the tournament phase i might have been i don't want to say burned out of that mechanic at the end of the game because it is so tense but i would probably not uh want to have this game on the table each weekend with this uh balance back and forth between the phases i'm actually less burned out i'm sorry i I'm missing a good word for it, but you know what I get at. Exhausted. Exhausted. Yeah, but it's it's even it's uh, exhausted to I, yeah, assume I think, even more. And I, but I, I agree. I think the the pacing of uh, the the game uh, really it lets you it lets you breathe. It's a different kind of stress, mm -hmm. and that well, I I can handle that way better. Which then again. Uh, in turn makes me uh, definitely be very happy if we would have this game on uh, the table each week. Uh, another thing that plays into that where I say I would totally be fine with it is just the huge, enormous amount of cards that come with this game. So y you have a very high replayability and very likely you won't, won't have the same scenario going on on the table. You will have to play hundreds of games um, to have something similar or the same kind of thing happening with all the other players at the table. So I really like that as well. There's two minor um, uh, dislikes for me about this game. The one being uh, the timer on the sheet here, or the, not the timer, the score thingamajig. I hate it because it's not, it's more like an abacus instead of um, just counting or tallying up it's like ah oh. you never you never had a, i actually i, don't, I, di I didn't I, have one i don't even know what the, the name is like a calculus ruler or something like that it's, i had one of those uh, yeah. in, for school I, I don't and i don't want to be pompous ass but i'm pretty good at uh, tallying up numbers in my head so then i just the thing that i have to do is how can i display that number yeah, instead you, of telling you, you, back and forth you just want to store a number in this exactly is a exactly way to, so it's just not it, intuitive for me and like i said it's a, a very minor uh, dislike hmm. for me the bigger one being the setup and putting away time i mean 
we haven't or we divide the cards after we played in the stacks like um core sex or or the promotion whatever they're called that daniel showed you so uh we pick them all apart because we don't know what kind of game or which decks we want to yeah. have the next time around it just takes a lot of time there is actually the uh the the manual even recommends if you're playing let's say a two-player game um you would still set up the same stack or store uh store deck uh so what they recommend is that you are playing multiple games with the same store deck so that you don't have to recreate it because you probably won't be playing through all of them that is different in a five player game at least yeah. we found that we almost got through the entire deck at, at the end of that uh and that can happen but it's it would still you could play multiple games with the same with the same store deck and ha have something else. Sometimes it might even be a, a better like call a campaign because thing going on or... be, because you then have a better idea what is actually available in, in the store. What's yeah. what's going on? Well, we don't do that for now. So just we just have to um, remember to well put aside maybe thirty minutes to set up and thirty minutes to put away. Um, which is fine if you have the time, you just have to be aware. And after a two hour play, I don't want to spend 30 minutes to put away the game. Um, that's just my personal, well, well they're all personal the... uh, opinions here. And the sun is ah, cut. <laughs> The and sun is gone. Suddenly we are left in, in the dark. Um, yeah, well, I hope it didn't screw up with my color ring out there. I'm but, sorry. But I, I know what you fine folks on the internet might say, and you are correct. Uh, if you think Marry that and get the, the husband to put away the, the game? the setup and uh, teardown time is taking too much time, well... Don't tear it down. Just play two games in a yeah. row and then... Yeah, that would, that would no, that, actually that would do the trick for me, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's it's just. But it's a. I'm a whiny person anyway, yeah. but you just have to be aware, and then you're good. Um, but that is pretty much all I have to say. I really like uh, me being the scorekeeper all the time. Uh, I really like uh, the pad. By the way, it's um, it's very very well sectioned off, so that you don't have to tally up too many things in your head right away, and uh, each. Um, sheet has a blank space so what I'm doing uh, on, on the back side so what I'm doing is uh, I every every big uh, sections here if uh, one and two are played I'm going to tally up those already because then it saves me time later on just a tiny little handy tip there and that uh, leads us into the thumb writing. Shall we have a thumb writing? Or do you have any other wise words to add? I was about to tell them about my likes and dislikes too. Well, you said them already. No, I was just explaining the game. <laughs> no, I, I distinctly remember you talked about all of the deck and the puns I, and I, all of I, that I think stuff. I, I think I, I, I put in my, my thoughts there as well. I... Uh, and so uh, I, when I saw that this game was out, we kind of missed the initial launch Kickstarter on, on this. And uh, for some reason, it for some quite some time, and it was quite expensive. We getting, can tell that in the funny stories. Getting that. Uh, <laughs> so I'm I was sorry. I was happy to finally pick it up and. Um, so there was some anticipation, and I think that this game really. Covered, covered it all. I, I'm, I am the one who's looking forward more towards the the gameplay aspects of this than the artwork and um, all that stuff. But I, since this is only six cards uh, to to play each each tournament, uh, even though, as Sarah said, there's so many cards, it's not that many cards. I mean, it's on. I would say when I see those stacks there, and I know what's still in the box. It's the same. It's there's actually not that much left in the box. It's, but it, uh, it's it's. it's I can, we can have an inch meter thingy well, in the description to, box to give, of you, all the to cards. give you a good idea. It's uh, about the amount what you would find in a legendary game or yeah. um, in uh, um, sentinels. 
uh, something like that. But uh, the, the difference there being that you, since you only use a, a few of those cards, or these decks are rather small, that's where the variety is coming from. Um, and this is uh, has certainly in my book the uh, as Sarah said the the uh, the perk of being bringable to the table almost every weekend because this is so different or can be so different each time you play and um, has a, a really well it challenges you to uh, to also fight yourself not some some other opponent on on the table because it is how you can handle the stress uh, setting setting everything together and it is uh, one of the games where everybody i think except for one or two can can have a hearty laugh it, 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 uh, uh, doesn't matter what happens at the table which cards are played but more on that in a second um but yeah it's a it's a big box it's not quite cheap or as cheap as other games but there's a huge amount of stuff in in here so i can only wholeheartedly recommend that if you have any likes for uh the format of card games trading card games or uh doing that actually i even if there if there would be a trading card game out there that uses uh, this simplified, uh, you only have a handful of cards, almost like the the uh, mini gamification of a trading card game, similar to what Love Letter is doing. I probably would play that, um, and it's for me it does that what Hearthstone did to for in regards to playing Magic or something like that. It just getting getting rid of some of the stuff that uh, is well well liked but not sometimes a little bit cumbersome and uh, i think they really did a really good job at uh, streamlining uh, what a trading or what a card game like that feels like and what different types of players you have different types of uh, cards uh, setups you have and getting that in there all right so we now rate thumb rate? now we can do the thumb one, two, three. Yeah, two thumbs is, up. This is a very solid thumbs up from me. I there's it's set in stone. Even even with the uh, um, setup and tear down time, I'm not as well. I just married you so that thing, you can set it up thing and that tear was it down. A little bit tedious was uh, <laughs> it uh, was doing, not tedious because funny stories because experiences. I was doing them. Yes, I was. Uh, well, we were actually playing Red Dragon Inn, and well, he had to leave the tavern first. Oopsie. So uh, while the others at the table uh, were still it. playing, yeah, that's why I kicked you out first. So that yeah, you have I'm, enough time and you have company. How and, considerate. Mm -hmm. only, only because of that. So he was actually sitting here and doing the bundles and everybody who left the tavern because they lost, they joined in <laughs> to <laughs> work on the bundles. Well, and... <clears throat> Um, yeah, I did win. I didn't roll the bundles. Anyway, actually this game or the experiences with this game started off for us last year uh, in November in a tiny little city, city called Dallas in Texas where there is this wonderful event called BGGCon and uh, we had bought it there. And played it there first time as well. Yeah. So um, I've I've seen it and it was on my. I want to give this a, a shot because other people also recommended it and it just looked cool. And I just liked the idea on 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 paper without even having it played yet. Um, but as I said, uh, it was fairly expensive shipping this to, uh, over here to the good old Deutschland and. Um, that's why I actually thought, hey, if we're over there, maybe yeah, we're lucky. Maybe we can see it, maybe we can buy it there. And yes, we were lucky. We bought it and we played it right away. So we had um, one friend of the whole BGG Con gaming group uh, actually had played it before. So the perk for me was that 
we didn't have to look through the rules getting, per se for the bird festival, start. but we were taught by somebody who uh, had played the game before and who is actually really good with teaching. So it was easy to grasp, even if you have no idea about it. It's kind of overwhelming opening that box like, oh my gosh, tons of cards and a oop. And uh, well, that was actually pretty nice. And we played the pre-release and the first tournament just to get mm -hmm. a taste for the game and get us started so that we, with that knowledge, then can come back to the good old Germany and play it with our own gaming group. Um, also, <laughs> it was the first game that I won. So just say there's a whole, sto whole story in the winning thing. So coming back to uh, good old Germany, playing with our friends, um, it took us uh, a bit to get this game to the table because, well, there we had like 30, 40 new games and um, there's this thing called Christmas and a New Year's and Easter. So it took us a while, but... <clears throat> Also, there were people in our group that mid, are, have to play this. Again. Yeah, mid-April. We played it another time with another friend from the States who visited and uh, who back in the day actually played uh, or was like um, uh, a referee for uh -huh. uh, the tournaments of... Uh, judge for Magic. Yeah, or judge. I Thank think you. It was magic. Yeah, let's say a trading card tournament because I don't actually remember what he said. <laughs> anyway, we played it with him and we had a lot of fun there too. And uh, I won again. And <laughs> then we played last week, last weekend. And I said, oh honey, maybe I can do a hat trick there <laughs> with the winning thing. And it looked really, really good. And then in the last tournament, Tina was sitting next to me. She always sits to my right. And uh, she was like, um, breathing rather heavily and she's like, oh, what can I do with her shit? So she was uh, drawing cards or getting cards that were not as intuitively fitting with her strategy. So at one point she said, screw it. I'm just going to play very disruptive and everybody, well, I don't know what else to do. So the first card she played was... Every player at the table, her included, had to play their cards randomly. And now, I was screwed big time. Surprise. Big time. Everybody at the table was like, oh my God, right. you're, that's that not you're serious. never. This is never going to be at the table again. <sighs> yeah, so she uh, granted Daniel the win in the end um, because his screwed up cards were better than my screwed up cards. <laughs> And, I'm uh, pretty sure I would have won even without her maneuver. It would not a, have been 22 points. I had a really I good... lost a lot of points, like 30, 40 points. That's mm. what I couldn't, couldn't ah. score because, well, randomization. But anyway, um, we <laughs> we banned that particular deck from, from the table. No, we it's only going to come out on, on, of course, I'm kidding here. Uh, it's only going to come out, well, this Sunday when we again will play it with another friend who's back from vacation who has played uh, trading card games a lot in his uh, teen or tween years. And he definitely has to play this game because we think it's right down his alley, up his alley, mm -hmm. up his alley. So yeah, that was that was that, and I'm trying to have a semi hat trick happening. So maybe, uh, but it's just it was just the pause that he got in me. Sure, the hat trick. Don't kill my dreams. The hat trick. Don't kill my dreams. Hmm. So we're enjoying. Um, this game a lot and uh, well we have a lot of giggles at the table too and uh, now finally before uh, we wrap up this video i think i remembered which painting i have to tease you had enough time to yes i actually check it maybe when you when you schedule this video on sunday can you please watch the first eight minutes um probably eight minutes it's very it's like a minute and a half after after I said I have to think, I got it, and you can see it in my face, I think, so you have to look out for it when you 
think I realized, okay, this is the painting that I have to tease. Can you please do that on Sunday? Okay. But do you now remember? Yes, I do, still. Did you look it up? No. When? Well. It's there on the other on the other network. I cannot, I don't have a device to look it up. But I remembered, uh, or I went down the list of all the games that we wanted to do for this season, and I think I have the right one. And it's a game that... Um, has to do with seeds, animals, and shapes. And it's very fitting for springtime or early summer. Favorite fruit? No. But that's there's seeds and the fruits and that's animals. That's tropical. It doesn't have to do anything with a spring per se. But that's tropical. Do you think they have around. no spring in, in tropical <laughs> no. areas? There's no spring. No, they there. they have tro tropical. No winter, no summer. <laughs> they, they, it's called it's tropical. Just, it's just hot. <laughs> they don't have a winter. <laughs> it's tropical, and uh, the other is where where they cut down the trees. That's <laughs> that's the two seasons. No. Farmed land and tropical. <laughs> you bought this game for me, with me so in mind, you is, said. Is this game a little bit like playing Tetris? Yes. Then I think I know it is Space Cadets. No, what? No. no. Space seeds and animals. <laughs> no. And it's not Tetris on Space Cadets. Little... It's more like memory. Maybe. Pollen eye allergies. I don't. I'm not it's sure. It's the rose over the mountain? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Maybe I need then to go to the garden and reflect on <laughs> what game on this might, might be while I play a, a game from someone who never does light games, someone like Uwe Rosenberg or something. Yeah, the, like the rose over the mountain. And uh, then contemplate what he would make, what game he would make if uh, he had <laughs> time and want to design a game for up to four players. <laughs> That is not patchwork. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in there. So, That's enough hints for you folks, I guess. I hope I teased the right <laughs> painting. If not, this is all going to be if not, even is, more hilarious. This is, this is way quite awkward. Well, no. we then Because then it's the, the week after. But I think I painted this one first and then the other one. Anyway, you will find out on Wednesday, 9 a.m. CET, the video is going to be up as well as the blog post in case you're interested in buying this unique one-of-a-kind painting that's going to be released. Uh, until then, uh, we hope that you enjoyed this long podcast. Oh, I love you too. Now we want to wrap this up. <laughs> okay. Um, do the good YouTube, YouTube stuff. Subscribe if you're new. And uh, don't lean forward. You disturb the mic with the bumping. Um, do the good YouTube stuff. Subscribe if you're new. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Uh, share it with friends, fellow board game nerdies, uh, whomever you think this is appropriate to see. You can visit us on the uh, social media sites that are in the description down below. You can also find us on Board Game Geek. There is a geek list for Gamers Couch and there's also a geek list for Draw for Initiative. So uh, hop on over, subscribe to the lists there and you will be notified whenever a new video goes up. We also talk there so you can ask us questions or leave comments either here in the comment section below or on Board Game Geek. Uh, feel free. We hope you have a great Sunday. Maybe you got some time to play games and it would be awesome. And uh, we're going to see you next week. And most importantly, if someone tells you to trust the heart of the cards, slap him. Because that's real a, hard. The, the heart of the cards is a bitch.
pretty sure. I, I didn't say this. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, folks. <laughs> but you said it in games earlier.